Bradford here from the WoW TCG subreddit and the WoW TCG Discord. We're doing a deck deck today on Deathwish Soul Warrior. This is the Blue of the Alliance version. The hero is Lord Benjamin Tremendison. His flip's not very important. It's uh, only can be used on your turn. Pay four, flip, and all opposing allies have minus one health. It's basically a board wipe versus tokens and can have some other things. The really the reason we're using him is because in the bottom left or in the middle of the card you can see he's Fury and he's Engineering. Um, and he's blacksmithing. Those are very specific, but those are the things we need. So let's move on to the core of the deck. It's Death Wish, an ongoing ability that only costs two. You can tap the ability. Both heroes have plus three attack this turn. That is not assault, that is attack. So what you can do with this, right off the back, yes, you can use it to hit the other hero and you both will take three. But another thing you can do that makes this deck a control deck is you can use Death Wish on your opponent's turn. So any allies that attack in, attack your hero who has three attack this turn. Not assault, but three attack. So basically, any allies that attack take three back. That's a very powerful ability. Death Wish is the core of this deck. Everything else is really just built around it. So we are a solo deck. We don't play any allies. We mostly just play abilities and equipment. Everything's built around Death Wish. Let's go over here and we'll show you the core of the deck in a combo that kind of works. So again, Death Wish. Both heroes have plus three attack. Okay, so the core of the deck is Death Wish. I've got a kind of a funky setup right here because I want to show you some things. So again, both heroes get plus three attack. Let's say this is a real game and this is uh, turn three. I've got three resources. If I were to just tap Death Wish and tap with my hero, swing for three, we would both take three damage. Simple. But what if instead I had, uh, I cast these Greaves first, I'll pay one, two, three to cast them. These things have three armor in the bottom, uh, bottom right, they cost three. It says when damage is prevented with this armor, we are a warrior, it's the bottom icon, so we only get that bottom effect. When damage is prevented, we ready our hero. So what would happen in this case is we would tap Death Wish, swing at our opponent, our opponent takes three, our opponent does three back to us, but we have the Greaves, so we just use that armor to block all three damage. But then again, when damage is prevented, you ready your hero. So now we get to untap our hero and swing again at our opponent, who will take another three damage. No, oh, that'll be six total. And then we will actually take three this time. This is a good trade. This is how we're winning our races in some aspects. So let's say this is a real game, okay? And we untap everything. And in our hand, we have this land. What does this land do? It's a, or a location. Tanks for everything, Dalaran. This thing has tap, ready up to X target plate armor you control, where X is the number of blacksmithing heroes and allies you control. So we have a blacksmithing hero. It's very important you have that if you're going to go with this deck. So basically what this thing does is tap, untap one plate armor, because you only have one engineering person in the whole game, or blacksmithing. So what you can do, it's the same combo we just did before. We can say attack, uh, activate death with swing at your hero, you will take three. Okay, it's going to go up there, whatever. Um, we will block with our armor, which gets to untap our hero. Then we can tap this, untap our armor, do it again. Opponent's up to 12 damage now. We just block the damage again, and we untap. And then we get to swing again, and hit our opponent for another three damage. So we'll be at a total of six, and we'll put our opponent at 15. That's annoying. <laughs> Anyways, our opponent will be at 15 damage. That's a pretty impressive little combo, and this can win games on its own. Other pieces to that combo is this is the there's a two of this weapon. You some people run three or four in the deck. Cost two, it's the fleshwork throwing glaive. It's thrown. What that means is whenever you attack with it, it's like your hero's throwing it. You put it back in your hand at the end of the combat. Or at the end of the turn or something. I don't remember the exact ruling, but the point is it goes back in your hand. Uh, why this is in the deck, because it does extra damage, and even if you didn't have all this other stuff in play, right, if it's gone, you can still just, let's clear some damage up, you can activate Death Wish, attack the opponent, and swing with the weapon, the strike cost is the black one in the bottom right, and then the damage the weapon does is in the bottom left. So we will pay one as we're attacking, to pay for this, and then tell our opponent, hey, we're hitting your hero. So now it will deal, we do three attack, And we also have an additional two attacks, so that will put five attack on our opponent. 
But another thing that Throne does is Throne makes that that combat long range. And long range is when they don't deal damage back to the attacker. So we basically just throw this blade at them, buffed by Death Wish, and our opponent just takes five, and that's the end of it. This combo works really well, even if you have these cards still in play. So let's say this is our turn. We would probably keep this in our hand and proceed with this. Uh, go ahead, swing, hit you for three, block all three, and then we untap both of these. So that's three damage. Swing again. Uh, we had to use this to untap it. Yeah, then we swing again, do another three damage, which will untap our hero. And then we can pay two, play the Fleshwork Glaive, tap one to swing with it, swing at our opponent for another three plus two, and this time they don't even hit us back. So that would have been three from the first time, three from the second time, which is six, and now five. So that's 11 damage that we took nothing back from in return. It doesn't take a long time if you're hitting your opponents for six or 11 a turn. You, you've got them on like a three or four turn clock, which is pretty fast. Okay, this card, a rare bean, it's not really part of the core of the deck, but I wanted to explain why it's in here. It's pay two, complete the quest, choose a rarity. And the rarity is seen in the very bottom of the card. See where it says Scourge War? That's the set, and blue is the color of the rarity. So in this game, it's just like World of Warcraft. Blue is rare. You always want to name rare with this thing. So it's pay two, choose a rarity, so we'll say blue or rare. Then reveal the top three cards of your deck. Put a revealed card that rarity into hand. Rescue on the bottom. So it's pay two, look at the top three. Basically pick a blue card, because you're always going to want to name blue with this, typically. Because the core of the deck, blue card, blue card, blue, well, it's a hero. But this is a blue card, and this is a blue card. So you have about 16, maybe 13 or 14 of the core cards happen to be blue. There's also a lot of other cards in the deck. I think about 30 total out of the 60 are blue. So you've got a pretty good chance to hit. Anyways, that explains this part of the deck, the whole dash with Death Wish and then resetting with these Greaves. And then using flesh work just to add extra damage. Oh, I even forgot <laughs> the part in the bottom. Uh, your hero actually pays one less to strike with this weapon. So it's actually free to strike with. And it's thrown. So you'll get it back into your hand. Um, let's focus on the other core of the deck. There is kind of two parts to it. This part focuses on this ability, Reconstruct. Pay two ability... Put target equipment from your graveyard into play if its cost is less than or equal to the number of resources you control. So it works very different than like Magic's reanimation. It's like guaranteed that you can't cheat. So let's say you had some resources here, right? Like it's a it's a normal game. You can reanimate or reconstruct things equal to this many resources. So if I had this is exactly seven, we could pay two. And let's say this is in our graveyard. Cast reanimate on this. And since we have one, two, three, four, five, six, exactly seven resources, we can put it into play. And then we can swing with it immediately. You can also just use this to buy back anything your opponent destroys. Let's get to the rest of the core here. Heroic throw is pay for, or you can play this card for free. You may discard a weapon rather than pay this ability cost. Deal 4 damage to target hero or ally. This is not instant, but being able to just throw 4 damage at anything is powerful if you're trying to burn your opponent out, but just great removal. And it works really well, especially with weapons like... This is a late game finisher weapon. It'll never do anything else except pretty much sit in the graveyard. Uh, so this card... You actually two for one yourself because you have to discard a weapon, but we have weapons that we want in the graveyard. There's only one of these in the deck, and there's actually uh, two of these, so there'd be two of these. Hailstorm. It costs three. You can just ignore the text for now. It costs three, has three attack, and its strike cost is two. Not really a very efficient weapon. Why is this card in the deck, you might ask? Because the damage is blue. It's frost damage in the bottom left. Some things in this game are just immune to melee damage. They just say, immune to melee. If you ever run into those cards, your deck is just toast. You do melee damage. The damage you do by default is melee, unless it shows otherwise. So this card gives us a way to do damage that's not melee, that otherwise we'd just be out of the game. Now read the text. Okay, let's read the bottom half first. Death Rattle. Your hero deals one frost damage to each opposing hero and ally. 
Death Rattle triggers any time a card touches the graveyard. It doesn't matter how. So, if you were to discard this Hailstorm, say with Heroic Throw, you could immediately deal 1 damage to all opposing heroes and allies. And it's Frost damage, which may help get through those certain creatures that are immune. We've also got the top part of the card, which says, Pay 1, remove 5 cards in your graveyard from the game. You deal 1 Frost damage to each opposing hero and ally. That only works if the card is in play. But sometimes you do just have 5 or 10 cards sitting in the graveyard, and you just need to basically board wipe your opponent. You could actually do that. If you had 10 cards, you could search for this, then pay 3 uh, to cast it, and if you had enough mana, uh, do the top trigger twice to shoot the opposing board for 2 damage, which may be all you need to do. And you can activate that ability instant speed as well. Darkness Calling is the other discard enabler. It's just pay 3, draw 2, discard 1. So it is sort of card advantage, you draw two and discard one, so you will actually get a card out of it. There's other outlets for quests that discard, but they don't lead to card advantage, so I think you'd rather have one that's a little more clunky and expensive than cards that don't actually draw you extra cards. Uh, so between Darkness Calling and Heroic Throw, those are two easy ways, I think there's about four of both of these, to get these cards into the equipment bin, into the graveyard. You've also, Darkness Calling, you can do this on your opponent's turn to trigger Hailstorm Death Rattle. So you can actually ping your opponent's board for one during their turn, and which, which may be pivotal if they have like tokens that they just put into play. They're 1-1s, and they just gave them all Ferocity, or something like that. Uh, you can also put other armor and other pieces of equipment with this into play and just reconstruct it. The reason I brought Jinrock over here, let's take a look at this guy. It costs 7 when a hero is dealt damage with Jinrock, destroy up to that many non that many target non-hero cards controlled by that hero's controller. To sum that up, anytime you deal damage with this thing and you're attacking, and then you hit the enemy hero, destroy X permanence where X is the damage you dealt, and you can't destroy the hero. So it starts off only dealing three damage, but with Death Wish that'll add three. So this deck on a a turn 7 play might be something like um, Heroic Throw for free, put this in the graveyard, hit your opponent for 4, pay 2 to reanimate it, put it into play, pay 1, 2, 3 to strike with it, tap that and your hero, tap your Death Wish. You deal 6 damage if you hit their hero, and you get to destroy 6 permanents. So just kill all the resources, something like that. That's pretty much game over right on the spot. So there's one of these in the deck, and that's its purpose in here, is to end the game. So this is a control-ish style deck that's got, that can have very aggressive openings. Has a lot of game versus creature decks. And discard doesn't even hurt that much, since it can just reanimate whatever part of the combo you discarded. Losing Death Wish is probably the worst thing about the deck. If, you, if your opponent destroys it, it's a very important card and you'll have to rely on the other win conditions. So let's get back to the main deck. Keys to the Armory. Pay two, search your deck for an equipment card, reveal it, put it into your hand. If you don't know, a lot of people call these things tutors because of a famous uh, magic effect called Demonic Tutor, which was just let you search your deck for a card. So if you hear me say tutor, I'm referring to this. So pay two, search for any piece of equipment that goes into your hand. This just helps you get more consistent openings or more consistent games. You can always find what you need. Is it getting really late in the game? Well, I guess you can search up your Zhenrock. Is it early in the game? You don't have one of the pieces you need? Go ahead and find your Greaves. That way your Death Wish combo is much more effective. Does the opponent have guys that are immune to melee? Go find your Hailstorm so your Frost can get through it. All these things. Also, if your opponent has a lot of armor, we'll, we'll get to the, the searching categories here. This is our one-of section, which all these things are just toolbox cards that are one-ofs in the deck meant to be searched. Back at our core, we already saw Death Wish. Keys is the search card. Reconstruct, just to reanimate equipment back into play. We saw Heroic Throw. Absolute Poise. Pay 3, instant. Interrupt target ability or equipment. There's a lot of the times you're just not going to have 3 mana up. And they're going to start laying their cards down. But once you have an idea of what your opponent's doing, this deck doesn't have to spend that much mana. If you get Death Wish and Greaves into play, like you're, you're pretty much already winning. You can deal 6 a turn and take nothing. Or deal 9 a turn and take 3 back. So you can just sit there with Interrupt Mana open. This card has a lot of use, especially 
in, in games two and three after sideboards when you have a lot of answers to equipment abilities. This is a really skill testing card. You know, it costs three. It's expensive. Knowing when to leave this up can lose or win you games. Going here, this is the core of the abilities. These are the core equipment of the deck. Guardian's Plate Bracers. It's got a weird cost in the top left because of the main power. Preparation. On your first turn, you may play this card without paying its cost. That's a really powerful ability. And oftentimes you will, if you know you're playing against an aggressive deck, because you see them lay down a hero like, hmm, I don't know, one of the two ag aggressive hunters or the aggressive warlock, something like that. Having this in play on turn one means I will block three damage every turn for the rest of the game. That's really, really strong. Um, and another thing to know is that it takes over your belt slot. Oh no, wrist slot. Bracers. Yeah. Yeah, we're figuring that out. Alright, let's move on. We saw these pieces of equipment already. Another core piece, we have four of this. Vindicator's Brand. It costs three. Uh, does three damage. Costs one to strike with. It's it's pretty decent. You know, you can play it on turn four and swing immediately. This thing's mainly in play because of the bottom text. When it's destroyed, you may destroy target ability or equipment. It's our ability equipment removal. This is our interrupts. This is our hard removal for it. And it's kind of slow and clunky. But how this works is if you have equipment in play already and then you play another piece of equipment, on the right side middle where it says melee 1, over here it says melee 1, that means it occupies that slot, and 1 means you can only allow to have one of it. So in this case, hey, you're a warrior, you can only have one melee weapon in your hand. So when you play an item that occupies the same slot, like trying to put two one-handed swords on, you only have one hand to do it, you choose which one of these gets destroyed. So you would say... You know, cast Vindicator's Brand, immediately the rule triggers, because you can't have two of them in the same hand. Eh, never mind, I'll just send Vindicator's Brand to the graveyard where it's destroyed. But it did enter play, so the effect goes off, and you get to pop an ability or equipment. Uh, it's also another way that you can trigger, trigger <laughs> Hail, uh, Death Rattle on these things if you, don't have a death, if you don't have a discard effect. Same thing, just play another weapon out while you have this. Send it to the graveyard. We saw Fleshwork Grave earlier. It's uh, two of the deck. You can add more if, you fight, if you'd like. This is the tutor row. So let's start with the cheapest one, Annihilator. It's really inefficient. I mean, it costs two, and it costs two to swing with. Not your favorite. But combat damage dealt by your hero with Annihilator can't be prevented. You have to swing with Annihilator for this to trigger. This is for decks that use... I don't know, I think if a priest or a paladin was using bubbles, and that say, you know, prevent all damage... Or for decks that use armor, this is the main point of getting through those decks, your damage can no longer be prevented, no matter how much armor is used. You just have to keep in mind, you do have to pay the strike cost, and you do have to strike with this weapon. But with Death Wish up, this thing will probably be hitting for 6 every time, maybe more. So Annihilator is your one of main deck answer to massive armor. Amani Mask of Death this is a weird card. It even has armor in the bottom right, you can see. It's got one armor. At the end of each turn, destroy all abilities, allies, and equipment with the same name as another card in play. It's kind of odd. You might be wondering what's the deal. This is good in long games where your opponent might get two or three of the same ally or ability or equipment. And you can just wait, especially if you already have it in hand. But it's an instant two for one when it does go off. And your own Amani Mask of Death does stay in play, so it's not like it kills itself. Um, you can wreck yourself with this on accident, like if you have two Death Wishes, so don't do that. Uh, you're mostly an equipment deck, so it's unlikely you're going to have doubles of anything. This is just to kill anything your opponent's got doubles of on the field. It's It works versus tokens as well. It's just one useful card that you can have. It's useful the, the later the game goes on, especially against abilities like Banish to the Nether, which is just Oblivion Ring. And if you pop two Oblivion Rings at once... That's got to be game. Like, it's just so game-changing. Moving on to the next one, Bone Fist Gauntlets. It costs two. On the bottom right, it's got two armor, so it can block two times. But it also has tap. You pay two less the next time you strike with a weapon this turn. Why would you search this up? It's not really something you have to search up often, unless you know you're going to be winning the game by attacking with this thing. Or by attacking with this, another weapon that has two strike cost. Uh, then its whole job is basically just removing the strike cost. It's very good at that, because there are several weapons that cost two to strike with. This is more of a card that you sometimes just draw one of. And it does work with the plate bracers, because this works on your wrist. 
these work on your hands. So mainly its job is just to reduce strike costs. Shuriken of Negation, it's an inst this is an easy include in your deck. This card costs four, it's an instant weapon. So when it comes into play, you may interrupt target ability card. This is a this is a tutorable weapon that can interrupt. So a, a turn six play might be search your keys for the armory for a shuriken and just hold up shuriken. Your opponent knows you've got mana to interrupt their next ability, but they're probably just gonna have to run it into it anyways. Also, it's got throne just like the fleshwork grave, so we can pay one to go ahead and swing, and we'll throw this at our opponents. It'll be long range damage. And then it goes back into our hand. So this is a very repeatable interrupt effect. Once you have the mana to support it. Very powerful and a good way to lock certain decks out of the game. Just keep in mind, if it goes into your graveyard, or if your opponent interrupts this interrupt, it kind of messes the chain up. The Horseman's Horrific Helm. I'm sorry the quality's kind of weird. Uh, this card costs four. Technically in the bottom right, it's only got two armor, but the text says if this armor would prevent damage, you may laugh a scary laugh. If you do, this armor prevents all that damage instead. People just play where you pretty much always laugh. You don't actually have to do that um, with most people. This can just stop huge damage attacks. Like if your opponent has a monster that's hitting you for eight, like a huge creature, this will block all of one single target source of damage. That can be really helpful, especially the some decks use an old finisher that basically just does X damage a turn. It just says, like, pay X, deal X. This would be great to stop that, so when they start shooting you for 7, 8, and 9, you can just, bink, I block all of it with one stop. Uh, the Cloak of the Shadowed Sun. This is more of a sideboard card. I like it in the main deck. Uh, you throw it on, your hero has Protector. That's irrelevant. On the bot, we only get the bottom part of the text because we're a warrior. Opposing heroes have minus 1 health. This is great versus token decks. It can stack with your hero power to give all opposing allies minus two health. Of course, that would that would take eight mana, so you'd probably want to build that in such a way where you've got or sequence that in a way so you can do that. Uh, Wraith Scythe is another one in the deck. This card costs four, two strike costs two melee damage. When you heal damage or when you deal combat damage, you heal that amount of damage from yourself. That's great. This is our one way to claw back into games that we, we know we're going to get burned out and we can't prevent the damage they've got incoming. It says when your hero deals combat damage. So it doesn't even have to be with this weapon. You can just play this weapon, and if you have a, a Fleshwork Grave, both these cards can be in play at the same time. So just keep in mind, or it says melee on the right, and over here it says ranged. So you can have both in play. So your turn four play could be play Wraith Scythe, and then this costs zero to strike with, and so immediately strike with this and deal two. Or if you have Death Wish, you deal five. And heal for five. That's a really strong combo. Once this thing's in play, it's hard for decks to race you, because between this and Death Wish, you can just start going off with the combo and healing every time. You don't even need to use this card's uh, attack. But if you have, like, Bone Fist Gauntlets plus this, you can actually start to build up. Uh, you could swing with it for free, and sort of claw back into a game that way. Shadowmorn, six cost axe. Uh, it is a two-hander, just in case you ever want to try and run shields. You can't, because this deck has a couple two-handers that it needs to run. Uh, when this weapon enters play, remove target ally from the game. If you do, add X plus one attack counters, where X was the attack of that removed ally. So, ideally, this thing comes into play, and you remove a very strong ally from the game. Hopefully a guy who has like four or more attack. And this thing has zero strike cost. So this is a good way to two for one your opponent. You get to kill their guy. And then you get to swing with a huge weapon for free over and over again. Do note that it comes into play with zero. So if you have, if they have no allies, just don't play this. And we already went over Jinrock. And this is two-handed as well. Going down here to the quest base. It's also just the, the draw engine. We saw Darkness Calling. It is card advantage. But it's more of a tool with our discard outlets. Considered efforts, uh, let's pay one, reveal the top three, and then put an even cost of two or more into your deck. Even cost of two or more means you can't put like an X cost ability in the deck. It doesn't work that way. This card's awesome. I mean, this is kind of just ponder, but only for even cards. This card's very specific on what decks you can include it in. It works best with decks that need a lot of even. So the core of our deck is Death Wish is even, 
it finds us that. It finds us a card that finds us everything else. It finds us reconstruct, even heroic throw. It dodges a lot of these equipments, and that's fine. Uh, but at least it gets us the core abilities. It can get us Fleshwork Grave and then a bunch of random cards here. But it's it's cheap, and you can always activate. Like, sometimes you don't have a turn one play. This is an awesome turn one play. Uh, you can you can fit this in between other activations. Just a strong card. We went over this equipment or this location already. Another trick you can do with this location. Let's say you used it. You're doing the combo. You untap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have one of these in hand. You can play it. And since you're only allowed to have one location, you choose which one to flip. So just flip that one over. And then you can do the combo again, untapping again. Just a good thing to keep in mind. All right, we saw Rare Bean. Again, this one, you pretty much always want to choose blue. That's the idea. Even Vindicator's brand is blue, and that's how we get rid of abilities and equipment. And then a Bloody Ritual. It's just pay four, take four damage, draw four. It says put four damage on your hero. What that means is you cannot block it with armor, because you're not, you're not being dealt four. You are putting four on your hero. So there's no way to get around that. You just take four. But you will typically find yourself doing this between like turn four and seven, and if you're gonna die, it sucks. But sometimes you gotta just take your chances and see. You know, you you take a whole turn off essentially from doing anything. But drawing four, you get to draw next turn. Think of this as like a a, a five five card advantage card. You're gonna see five cards by the time you're gonna start casting anything. So it really helps you find stuff. Let's move on to the sideboard. We have one of these Shuriken Negations main. Here's two more in the sideboard. If you're against a deck that's just tons of abilities you have to interrupt, you can get to the point where you just Death Wish and play and just start punching them with that, and you just keep Shurikens up all game. That becomes really difficult for them to deal with. So that would give us two Shurikens plus one more. That's three interrupts. Absolute Poise is another three interrupts. So those would be six interrupts versus ability-based decks. And we also have Pummel. Pay 3, instant, you may exhaust one of your melee weapons rather than pay Pummel's costs. Interrupt target ability card. This card will just get people. They never expect this thing. Unless they've played for a long time and they're like, I know why his weapon's untapped. <laughs> um, having this in your main deck, interrupt target ability, it doesn't interrupt equipment, so we don't really have tons of uh, sideboard answers for equipment. But honestly, we, we kind of already have main deck answers for equipment. So... Ability-based decks are some of the strongest ones, and now that gives us three shurikens, three absolute poises, three pummels. We have nine interrupts in our warrior deck. That can do some work. And during that time, we're either pressuring them with death, death wish, flesh work combo. We're just pressuring their life total with that. Or we're building resources for reconstruct Genrock, kill all your resources combo. And um, since you can pay this for free, you can cast this for free, if you have a melee weapon untapped, you will want to start to think about those plays later on in the game. This is a deck that requires you to really plan several turns ahead. The cards are all clunky. A lot of them cost three and four, and you have to pay mana to do other things. So you really have to plan your turns. But you can just cast a Vindicator's Brand and just have it sit in play for a long time. And then anytime you want, you can sack it, kill their stuff, or tap it, pummel for free. This pummel makes a lot of cards like Wraith Scythe, which otherwise you'll never really want to play, or Annihilator. It plays these melee weapons that you really don't have enough mana to efficiently strike with, and it turns them into free counter spells, and that's so hard to play around. Netherbane, there's one of these. Cards in play you control can't be removed from the game. This is a, a meta thing, so you kind of have to know the game to know which decks have removal. Well, like, specifically remove from game based removal. Some some decks have destroy that card. Some decks have remove that card from the game. So, like, Warlocks rely on removing cards from the game. This makes that a real pain for them. Um, so, we've basically got ability. With these counter abilities. We've got a little bit of counter uh, equipment in the deck. It's not really our focus. This counter is just certain classes that have to deal with our niche strategy. We have three anti-graveyard cards. This card, just pay one, remove all card, and target player's graveyard from the game. This is good because it's we don't it doesn't draw us a card, it doesn't do anything efficient, or it doesn't do anything extra for card advantage. It's just super cheap and efficient. Our deck functions very well on its own, and our opponents have to figure out what we're up to. This can stop graveyard decks, and they, they can't really play around it. It just costs one. Like... 
I can do two things in a turn. I can always do something else and pay one. That's just so easy to do. You can also just leave this up. I'll always have one mana untap in your opponent's turn and just really ruin their game plan. You could go up to three or four of these if you really wanted to. Um, I have a torch. Torch of Retribution, pay four. Target player shuffles his graveyard into his deck and then I draw a card. So this is just this card, but it's way more expensive. It's harder to play around. Or it's easier to play around because it's expensive. At least it draws you a card, though. Sometimes you just want that. So it's three graveyard cards for the matchup. The last card here, this is totally main deckable, and maybe it would be better in main deck over the cloak because this is versus allies only. This thing is engineering hero required, which is the reason we have this hero. He's blacksmithing for the location, engineering for this piece of equipment. It has... Tap this equipment, remove the top card of your deck from the game. You deal range damage equal to that card's cost to target ally. So this does not tap your hero, it taps the equipment. So what's pretty neat is that, I mean, it's random, you never know what you're going to get. But it's a way to try and get rid of your opponent's creatures one by one, in addition to you attacking with your weapons. Sometimes your opponents have a ton of creatures, and you wouldn't survive if you had to face bash every one of them. So this is a good way to do that. This is also an instant speed answer that you can use on your opponent's turn. If your opponent is playing the the deck like Splinter Twin, I call it Winter Twin, or the Krabby Fin Winter Volt combo, people are familiar. You need to be able to kill their their Krabby Fin, which is like Deceiver XR. You need to be able to kill him instant speed. So you can just leave this up on your turn and tap it. You could also play one of these in the side and one in the main. That way you have two. You're allowed to equip two different trinkets, even if they have the same name. That way you can just start, you know, you're milling through your deck. You're actually removing the cards, which could hurt if it's like a card you needed in your graveyard. But either way, it's an efficient, cheap way to just kill enemy allies, and it's repeatable. It has no mana cost to activate. So once this is in play, you're going to try and gun down a creature every turn. I know this has been a long one. Let me go through over a couple of these real quick. Strong against. <laughs> this deck is kind of by default strong, but let me show you a couple of abilities specifically. Mage's Blizzard, at the start of the, op the Mage's opponent, which is you, the Blizzard will deal one damage to you and make it so you can't attack. But you have armor to block Blizzard's damage, and then Blizzard doesn't do anything. So Blizzard doesn't do much against this deck, because you typically have armor. Uh, Poach is just kind of... Thoughtseize. I don't know if any decks can really say they're strong against Thoughtseize, but when, you're, when your opponents try to Thoughtseize away your equipment, you can just reconstruct it, making this card much less pivotal and important than it normally is weak against. I put a bunch of these here so you just get an idea of what is good against this deck if you're having trouble countering it. Eye of the Storm, super good against this deck. Just tap down the hero. They can't trigger any of their combos if their hero didn't take damage. It's, uh, it's a pretty good ability. Or location. Spell Suppression, basically just a one mana silence. So mages will always be good because of that card. And Brutalize, when it comes into play, destroy target armor. And then it, they can sack it, shoot a guy for two, and he can't uh, he can't attack. You can probably armor out the second part, but the fact that it gets to come into play and destroy your armor, it's not like that strong against your deck. It's just a random effect that maybe they could, comes into play, destroys your only armor, and then he can shoot you for two, and you don't have any armor to block it, so he does stop you for a turn. That's a pretty good play for a mage. This is Druid. Druids have a ton of answers to your class. This is just a terrible matchup. They've got a two mana, just destroy any of your permanents, basically. Destroy target ability or equipment. They even have this card. Pay three, choose one or both. Destroy target ability or equipment. You could choose both and just two for one them. Insect Swarm. Uh, you deal 2 damage, that doesn't really matter. The ongoing has minus 2 attack. They attach this to your hero, your hero has minus 2 attack forever. That really sucks. Cyclone, you don't need to read all that. It basically is an instant 1 mana. You put this on someone and they can't attack for 4 turns. Or 3 turns. Hurricane's pretty similar. It's going to end up being about 3 turns of non-attacking. Which is all your deck wants to do. And even Graveyard Removal can hurt your deck. If your opponents have one, that they can shuffle away your important cards you're trying to reconstruct. That's a huge way. That's like a tempo play that would ruin your turn. Uh, Blackout Truncheon. When it comes into play, you can tap a hero and it doesn't untap. So this is what we call a stun effect. And whenever your hero gets stunned in this game, or any kind of creature, what you normally do, if your opponent plays this, 
and they target your hero or something, instead of just tapping it, flip it upside down. That way we know it's stunned. That way on your untap step, you untap it like this. That way it's still not untapped. It's not like the best best card in the world, but it's another card that prevents you from doing anything for two turns. Gouge is the same thing. It stuns someone. So it's it's tap them now, and they don't untap next turn. Since they're both instant, which means you get to use it when they attempt their first attack. Boundless Agony, only a rogue card. Heroes and allies can't be healed, and damage that will be dealt is unpreventable. Rogues will put this into play, and you can't Wraith Scythe to heal anything, and all your armor is turned off. If they're in a race, they're going to win the race because of this card. Uh, this also makes your combo not really do anything. Your Greaves of Ancient Evil no longer stop damage, and they no longer let you untap your hero a bunch, so it just uh, stops your combo, leads to the game ending. At the end of the turn, this guy can destroy an ability or equipment. He costs seven. This guy is basically the same. He can only destroy equipment. These guys can sit and play and just slowly eat your board away. They're expensive, though, but you'll find them in a couple late game control decks. Weldon, we've went over him before. Uh, he's a 5 cost 5-5, five, five, so he's pretty big. He dodges your removal spell that does 4 damage. He puts 3 one, one Protectors into play at the end of your opponent's turn, every turn. So this card is really annoying to deal with, unless you have the cloak that gives them minus 1 health. This one. This is a main deck answer, or a side deck answer, to this card. Once he's in play, you're going to have a hard time getting through those tokens. So do keep that in mind. You can also have that cloak in play uh, and just kill this guy with like heroic throw or something like that. Uh, Voice of Reason. This card's not necessarily a counter to the deck, but I put it here just because if you're trying to chip them down with 6 or 12 damage at a time, if they're going to be healing back for like 6 or 8 damage at a time, I've seen that pretty often. So this card's going to be hard for you to actually try and race through if you're playing the warrior. Uh, down here, some shaman stuff. <laughs> Anytime your stuff untaps, put it into your hand. This is super annoying, and you don't have a lot of good ability destruction main deck. This is going to make you really bad. <laughs> so you're going to have to kill this thing, and they're probably going to reanimate it and interrupt you and tap you. And The game plan is going to be focused around this stupid one health totem, so keep that in mind. This is another card you just can't do much about. It costs two, comes into play, pay X, destroy this, and destroy each equipment with cost X or less. Yeah, if your opponent plays this on turn, like, th five, and they just pay two, then they pay three as their X to just destroy all your stuff that costs three or less, it's going to be hard to recover from that. This is a generic horde answer, but you're going to be seeing him. He's a protector, so he's going to make it hard to protect, and when he comes into play... Gets to pop one of your equipment off. But also the fact he's a protector means he's going to be ruining the next attack or so. So he's going to make it difficult for you to trade into their allies or just their face. Really smart two-for-one card. Miniature Voodoo Mask. This really isn't that big of a counter. Because you have other ways of going around it. But this on Death Wish or Greaves of Ancient Evil will stop the combo. And that's a big part of your deck. And Anubarak... Why is this guy a counter? Well, he can eat through the cards in your graveyard, and he's a huge 6-6 protector. People just don't play a lot of protectors, so when they play this guy, you're going to have to use your face rushed into his face. You're going to take a bunch of damage back, and then they might even be able to bring him back out of the graveyard next turn. Consider this card. Anytime that you're playing against a deck that's going long, they may have this in there, and you better be ready to deal with it. Well, that's been Deathwish Solo Warrior. Hope you guys enjoy this deck. It's a lot of fun and an interesting style to play, a mix of uh, aggression and control.